Well, last night we all watched a petulant psycho debase himself and the nation on live TV, and now his deranged sycophants are making all kinds of excuses for his performance. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. So, where to begin with that debate last night? Actually, debate is not the right word. It was more like a collective brain hemorrhage. It was like watching democracy get a lobotomy, or as CNN put it... This was the most chaotic presidential debate I've ever seen, and I suspect most of you, if not all of you, have ever seen. That was a hot mess inside a dumpster fire, inside a train wreck. That was the worst debate I have ever seen. In fact, it wasn't even a debate. It was a disgrace. That was a show. And, you know, we're on cable. We can say that. Apologies for being um, maybe a little bit crude. You guys are being way too charitable. Watching that debate was like hotboxing a porta potty with crystal meth in Phoenix in July. It was like being hit on the head with a lead pipe in a room filled with nitrous oxide. It was like watching a two person performance of 12 angry men where one actor played one part and one was mad enough for the other 11. Also, Dana. I don't think you have to worry about being crude. Nothing you could say or do could top that debate. Wolf Blitzer could have shown up in full BDSM gear, screaming the lyrics to WAP, and it still wouldn't have been the crudest thing to happen last night. It would have been the most fun thing. You know, we got a couple more debates left, Wolf. It was, to state the obvious, one of the most embarrassing debacles in American history, and I'm including Kevin Federline's performance at the 2006 Teen Choice Awards. Okay, Fed, we owe you an apology. We thought Popo's out was the lowest point in American history, but that was before the president took a Popo's out on the debate stage. And the debate somehow managed to top the embarrassing run-up in the days prior, during which the right-wing fever swamp belched up a bunch of insane conspiracy theories about Joe Biden, all of which found airtime on Fox News, from their morning shows to their supposed straight news anchors. Fox spent the entirety of yesterday airing one deranged claim about Biden's cognitive state after another. The Trump team asked to inspect the ears of each debater for electronic devices or, or transmitters. The Biden team has not consented to that. As far as the listening devices and the Biden campaign's response to that, I think that's interesting, and we're going to have to follow that through the day. It's a risk to run a candidate who may be senile. The Trump campaign is convinced that Biden's staff will try to feed him lines through an earpiece. Elderly people experiencing memory loss and the other problems associated with age can have, you know, go for periods of hours at a time and be just fine. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt Biden's senile, but that doesn't mean he's going to show up tonight. Look, the man has dementia. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> I've talked to doctors. I've had them look at 100, 100 different tapes of his five years ago and today. The Biden people say he's fine. Oh, he, can't, he can't recite the Pledge of Allegiance and he's fine. He actually displays symptoms that two gerontologists told me are classic symptoms of middle-level dementia. I think the president is quite right to say maybe he's taken Adderall or uh, a, uh, some kind of attention deficit disorder. Right, thing. And it's not just my opinion. It's the opinion of a number of doctors I've actually, uh, you know, interviewed. Were they interviews or were they exams? Like, during these interviews, Rudy, were you wearing a gown that tied in the back? These interviews were so secret that they didn't want me to take notes, so they tied my hands together. But sure, Fox and Friends, take medical advice from a guy who always looks like he has electrodes attached to his testicles and makes this noise. <laughs> also, Fox and Friends, what are you guys doing? A lunatic rants and raves about God knows what's, and you just sit there like... Tourists watching a guy take a dump on the F train. Maybe this is performance art? Honey, you just give me a dollar. I'm going to tip him. Also, I love this new argument Fox has, courtesy of Brit Hume, that Biden is actually secretly senile. Seems to me that if you have it together enough to hide that you're senile, you might not be senile. Pretty sure if you were suffering from dementia, it would show up at the debate. In fact, I'm pretty sure it did. Seriously, everyone who watched that debate had flashbacks to arguing with the drunk friend to hand over his car keys. I'm not drunk. Then tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. Hunter Biden. Burjima. So they tried arguing that Biden was in cognitive decline, but then it became obvious he wasn't, so they had to change tack to suggesting that maybe he's on drugs. If anyone's on drugs, it's you guys. If you tune into Fox News at any given moment, they sound like they just got done doing blow in the bathroom at CBGB. They sound like coked up screenwriters pitching ideas. All right, so like, what if he has like, I don't know, a secret earpiece, right? He gets questions in advance, but he's senile, and you can't tell because he got a shot of adrenaline in his heart just like a uh, Pulp Fiction. Woo! Even Fox's supposed straight news anchors are just casually entertaining insane conspiracy theories like Biden wearing an earpiece at the debate. 
you'd know if Biden was wearing an earpiece because he wouldn't have the latest model. He'd have the big old clunky one with the curly wire going down the back of his shirt. And during that debate, he would have called for backup like an undercover cop at a drug bus gone bad. Oh, man, I didn't realize you uh, fellas would have so many guns. You got to get me out of here. Sassafras! Sassafras! But sure, let's entertain the idea that one of the candidates was on Adderall. I wonder who it was. They will, under my proposal. It's not what you've said, but and it's not what your party is, has said. And so we have to be engaged. That's not what they're every, talking about, that, Chris. We have the highest defi trade deficit China with ate Mexico. Your lunch, All right, ate 10%. 10%. In, in, China ate your lunch, Joe. China ate your lunch, Joe. He said, maybe we should drop a nuclear weapon on them. They may. I never said that. Antifa's an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. If he just stay out of the way. Oh, Look here. Oh, really? Here, oh, really? This guy. I want to see fact, an honest okay, ballot yeah, cut. He's just afraid of counting the votes because you're wrong. You're wrong. Let, I, no, I, wanna, I want to continue with you on this, I love the, yeah, Vice President about. Biden. Chris, he's so wrong in, when he makes in, a in statement fact, no. like that. Oh, man, did someone switch out his can for Diet Crank? All the crank, none of the calories? I've never seen the actual redness of his face overtake his bronzer like that. Trump had so much crazy Coke energy that the moderator, Chris Wallace, literally had to yell no at him to beg him to stop interrupting. You didn't want me to ban? All right, we're, uh, gentlemen, we're, 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 which no, was heavily Mr. President. You would have been President, much later, Joe. Mr. President, much later. sir. Chris, that was the worst him, part me. of Obama. Let me ask my question. Well, I'll, I'll ask Joe. I, 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 the individual no, no, hey, Mr. Million? President, Mr. Even President, the who testified. Stop. Stop. No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm Mr. President. Three and a half million, Joe. No, no, no. Sir, stop. Wait a minute. Mr. President, no, Mr. President. No. Can I be honest? It's a very important question. Try to be honest. He stood up. No, the answer to the question is no. The moderator of a nationally televised debate had to treat the president like a rabid dog humping his leg. No, 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 no. Bad, bad president. Meanwhile, Biden was just standing there looking over at the camera like a grandpa on a sitcom. Oh, I can't believe my daughter married this dope. But the deranged petulance on display from Trump last night, it's not unique and it's not an aberration within the GOP and the conservative movement. Unless you let them scream, uninterrupted for 90 minutes straight, they think you're out to get them. Even if you work for the same network during the debate, Fox host Laura Ingram tweeted, Trump is debating the moderator and Biden. I love how she calls Chris Wallace the moderator like she doesn't know him. You guys are coworkers. You get the same Fox News sweatshirts every Christmas and your paychecks are signed by the same guy. These people are such pathetic sycophants. Can you imagine if Ingram moderated a debate? Mr. President, the first question is to you. How are you so good at golf? And is it hard being as strong and handsome as you are? You have 90 minutes to respond and Mr. Biden, you can go. Not like Wallace didn't have. Moments of obsequiousness. Twice he teed up questions by promising the president they would make him happy. Sir, you'll be happy. I'm about to pick up on one of your points to ask the vice president, which is he points out that you would like to add a public option to Obamacare. Mr. Okay. President, you're going to be very happy because we're now going to talk me. about law and order. First of all, it's not your job to make him happy. Second of all, you're wasting your time because he's never going to be happy. If he was a children's book character, he would be an ogre who eats the happiness of children and never gets full, and then a talking butterfly would tell him, you'll never taste happiness until you face your anger, and then he'd eat the butterfly. And third of all, it's not a moderator's job to be a hostage negotiator trying to get the president to calm down during a debate. I know you're upset about uh, protesters, so we're going to send in some sandwiches. Trump's allies just can't help but make excuses for his grotesque behavior, even Don Jr. got in on the Wallace bashing in an interview with Sean Hannity, and Hannity said nothing. We knew that was coming anyway with, with of course, Wallace. So, you know, I understand he's a Fox guy, but he's, he's, no, uh, he's no conservative. He's going to be, and he's no centrist either. I'm sorry, you think Chris Wallace is a liberal? He works for Fox News. He's not a liberal. He had the energy of an exhausted dad at Thanksgiving trying to get his burnout son to take off his headphones. Tyler, what did we say about blasting Metallica at the dinner table? No, Tyler. Stop giving me the middle finger. Oh, now it's double middle fingers. Very creative, Tyler. You know what? You're about to be very happy because I'm moving your curfew back to 3 a.m. Yet the Fox News post-debate spin was even more pathetic than all the whining about the moderator. Trump is an apex predator. He's the Lion King. Trump went out there tonight and did what Trump does. He's the shark in the ocean and he acted like it. You're going to get a gladiator warrior fighter in Donald Trump. A guy that is going to go to battle like he has for the last four years. He's a predator, a gladiator, a shark in the ocean. He's like a cross between He-Man, Xena Warrior Princess, and a bowl of farina with googly eyes. And I'm sorry, you watched that debate and saw an apex predator and a gladiator warrior fighter because he didn't look like a predator to me. Most of the time he stood there with his head cocked like an old dog who just heard a twig snap, held onto that podium the way my grandma holds onto her walker when they're reading the Powerball numbers. And when they weren't, 
slobbering all over him. Fox pundits and GOP allies were pretending they watched a completely different debate altogether. The president was so solid when he talked about the economy, when he talked about his COVID response. Hmm, that's pretty selective. That's like saying this guy nailed the approach. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to watch it again. That's what the internet's good for, instead of everything else. Trump's incapable of talking about policy because his record is dismal and he doesn't know anything. There's a raging pandemic and economic crash and the West is on fire and that's why he's talking about drugs and Hunter Biden and whatever other bull he and his gang of mafia bobbleheads concocted. That's all they can talk about. They have nothing else. Same reason why Trump refuses to condemn violent white supremacists and why he's lying about the safety of mail balloting. His only chance of remaining in power is to undermine the election and threaten violence if he loses. He doesn't want to win the election. He wants to destroy the election just like he destroyed the debate. Last night, he was given the opportunity to denounce violent white supremacist militias and told them to stand by, and then later urged his supporters to go to the polls and physically intimidate voters. Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right boys. Who would you like me to condemn? White supremacists and right boys. Proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. I'm you go urging first. my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. They literally told him, do it, condemn them, and he still wouldn't. The best he could muster was, sure, I'll condemn them before refusing to condemn them. That's the way you respond when you are offered a hors d'oeuvre at a party. Sure, I'll take a crab puff. Then you spit in a napkin and throw it away. It was just crabbing that. And then to follow that up, by telling your supporters, which would include those violent right-wing militias to intimidate people at the polls is just chilling. Let's remember, we've already seen armed right-wing militias roaming the streets of Louisville and Wisconsin, and now violent far-right groups like the Proud Boys are celebrating Trump's call out of the debate. If you were to sum up the state of our democracy right now, I think you'd have to say that it's a show. And, you know, we're on cable, we can say that. Apologies for being um, maybe a little bit crude. Dana, my word! And if you're wondering what sort of defense Trump allies could possibly mount of those horrific comments, here's Rick Santorum, who for some reason is still a CNN commentator doing his level worst. He was asking the president to do something that he knows the president doesn't like to do. Which is? Which is say something bad about people who support him, right? What, declining and, violence? It, well, well, talking about... The, the su white supremacy? supremacy. His, his, yeah, the white supremacists. That's your defense? So I guess by that same token, Trump would accept an endorsement for um, ISIS if they praised him. If they were smart, they'd start waving Trump flags from the back of their trucks. So I guess, you know, long live the caliphate is kind of my current position. The president's performance in last night's debate was truly one of the most embarrassing debacles in American history. Trump debased himself and the nation, and then his wormy supporters slinked to his defense. Trump's behavior last night was perfectly emblematic of the modern GOP, right-wing media and the conservative movement. The Republican mascot shouldn't be an elephant. It should be a possum being cornered in a garage by a rake. They're all like this, deranged, petulant children, constantly aggrieved, making excuses. We've got a close-up look at just how odious and grotesque the president is. His only goals are chaos and nihilism. He thinks that's the path to power, and now it's up to us to show him he's wrong and restore our democracy by voting in overwhelming numbers to repudiate him and everything he stands for. Because right now, our democracy is a hot mess inside a dumpster fire, inside a train wreck. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.